what the Bible said. Congregation is singing in a cappella. We don't use music instruments. We don't use choirs. We don't use praise teams. We don't use bands and all these rock bands and, 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 and house DJs in the church. We don't do that stuff. We don't even shake it for the Lord. We don't do stuff. We don't dance too. Why? Because Ephesians 5.19 says, when you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. That's all the Bible teaches. Colossians 3.16, with thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. So all that's commanded is to sing. Every time the New Testament talks about music in the church. Nowhere in the New Testament will you ever find a verse or an example or an instruction or a teaching or an, or, or an exhortation about anybody who did anything in addition to sing in the church. You will never find an example or a teaching or a commandment about dancing, anybody dancing, or about playing music, or about having a separate group that's dedicated to sing on behalf of the church. None of that stuff. Amen? Amen. Most of these things are man-made things, man-made ideas. But they try to take some things from Old Testament um, passages of how people worship in the Old Testament. But remember, Jesus said that everybody that worshipped in the Old Testament worshipped by, by the law of Moses and not in spirit and in truth. Nobody in the Old Testament worshipped God as he really is, according to Jesus. Jesus told the woman at the well, no longer will people worship God at this mountain in, Sam in Samaria or in Jerusalem. For a time is coming and has come now, when the, when the true worshipers, there it is, the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth as he really is, for God is a spirit. And that's in John 4, verse 23 and 24. So people in the Old Testament didn't worship God the Father in spirit and in truth as he really is. But they were worshiping according to an old covenant, which wasn't perfect. But now the perfect covenant is the New Testament. It's perfect. And so we don't do anything apart from singing as a congregation together, just like we're doing now, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs together, praising heart, God from the, from the heart. That's all that's told for us to do. Amen? Amen. Sunday offerings has no tithing included. So any church that has tithing and stuff like that, a tithing system, is not following the Bible carefully. That church has missed it. They're still stuck in the Old Testament. Because in the New Testament, the churches of Christ were commanded on how to collect money. We see time and time again in the New Testament many examples of how the church of Christ collected money in the, for the New Testament. I mean, in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and 2 says, when you collect money for God's people, I want you to do exactly what I told the churches in Galatia to do. This is each Sunday, each of you must put aside part of what you have earned. That's 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2 verse, um, that's the passages in the CEV version. So that's what has been told each Sunday. You just take a, you just give an offering in church. No tithing. As far as the tithing is con concerned, Hebrews 7 verse 5 says, The law teaches, the law meaning the law of Moses, the Old Testament law, teaches that even Abraham's descendants must give a tenth of what they possess. And they are to give this to their own relatives, who are the descendants of Levi and our priests. So first of all, the Bible says in Hebrews 7 verse 5 that according to the law of Moses, Tithing was only required for the Jewish people. And not, me and you, we're not Jews. So how can churches in Namibia, for example, people that are not even Jews, say, hey, are you robbing God? Give a tithe, give a 10% to God when you're not even a Jew. Because the Lord didn't talk about the world giving a tithe to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the Levites. No. The law of Moses, the Bible says, teaches that even Abraham's descendants must give a tenth of what they possess. And they are to give this to their own relatives. 
So they were to give this to their own relatives. We don't see Egyptians in the Bible kept coming to 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 the to the to, to the to the to the um, to the to the temple of Jerusalem in the Old Testament. Egyptians coming to give a ten, their tenth percent to God. We don't see that stuff. We don't see um, Hittites and Amorites and you know all these people. Syrians coming also there. Hey guys, hi to the you know to, to the Israelites. Greeting the Israelites and also these Syrians and, and Egyptians also coming to give 10% in the Old Testament because it wasn't required for them. That was only by law to the Jewish nation. So somebody even to say that we, you must give a tenth and try to use the Old Testament as an example is also taking it out of context and giving you a false doctrine because the law didn't require that from the whole world, only the Jews. Amen? Amen. And even for the Jews, that law was changed because the Bible says in Hebrews 7 verse 12, and when the rules for selecting a priest are changed, the law must also be changed. And so that's in the CV. And so the, the law for, for how to, to give, give an offering, or how, to, how, to, how to collect money for God's people, or for the church, in the New Testament, even if you were a Jew, you are not required to give your 10% to God at Jerusalem or to the Levites anymore, because the rules for selecting a priest was changed. And so the priest, the high priest, we read that Jesus is the high priest, Hebrews 9, 11, but he serves from heaven, so how are you gonna go give him the 10% down, how? You see? And so the headquarters is no longer in the temple of Jerusalem. The temple of Jerusalem in Israel is not the headquarters of God for the New Testament. That was the headquarters for the Old Testament. So they had to go in there and give a tithe, tenth. But now in the New Testament, that, that has been moved. You see, so now the high priest was changed. And so from Judah, Jesus was chosen, he is high priest, but he, as the son of God, is in heaven. And the, 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 the headquarters now is in heaven. So we cannot, So now even the law for a Jew now has been changed with regards to tithing. In verse 12 the same passage same chapter Hebrews 7 verse 5 talks about the Jews giving a tithe but now in verse 12 it says yeah but that law was changed and what's the law now first Corinthians 16 verse verse 2 amen give a give an offering on Sunday that's all and so Sunday offerings is all we give without tithing and communion is every Sunday. We eat the communion on Sunday. Acts 20, verse 7. On the first day of the week, we, we gather with the local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching to them. So, on the first day of the week, we gathered with the local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. And remember, in Hebrews, I mean, 1 Corinthians 11, 26, we read that, for as often as you eat this bread, how often? On Sunday, every Sunday. So, as often as you eat this bread on Sunday, you proclaim, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we continue doing this on Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Preaching must be New Testament teaching. Acts 2, 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Remember, the apostles were teaching the church at Antioch. And that's for the first time, that was the time when disciples were called Christians beginning from that church. What were they doing? The apostles were teaching the apostles' doctrine. Whoever does not agree with this teaching or doesn't bring this teaching, you know, they don't have that. So it's the apostles' teaching we follow, not the prophets in the Old Testament. So the New Testament. <coughs> 1 Timothy 2 verse 12, I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. So women don't preach on Sundays or anyway in the Church of Christ. They can preach and teach as much as they like to fellow women privately somewhere or something. Or to children, something like that. Yeah, but not in the church. And the preaching must be New Testament based. We can use Old Testament references just like we were looking at Noah's Ark. You know, but then what you're teaching must be based on the New Testament. You cannot teach tithing and stuff if, if it's not in the, if it's Old Testament stuff. 
It's not for the New Testament. <coughs> Amen? Amen. And that's Amen. where a lot of people are making the mistake. They are in the new, they say they are serving God and they are following Jesus, but then they are still preaching and teaching Old Testament. Amen. And that's why they cannot move on. And that's why they're stuck in sin. To come out of sin, you have to follow the teaching of Christ. And that's why our prayers are also male leaders, leadership in prayer. Acts 2.42 they continued in prayers. And so, 1 Timothy 2 verse 8 says, In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God. So men, males, are the ones to lead prayer in the church. Lifting up holy hands to God. Amen? Amen. And that's how we conclude in Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23. Jesus the head of the church says, Not everyone who calls out to him, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of his Father, <coughs> the will of my Father in heaven, will enter. On judgment day, the head of the church says, On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But he says that he will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws, who practice lawlessness. You've been breaking God's laws, been part of churches that are not following God's laws. Do you see him? And so the head of the church says, he's not going to save people in all these other churches. He's going to save those in his body, in his church. Christ is savior of his church only. Hebrews 5, I mean, Ephesians 5, verse 23. Amen? And so that's where we conclude the Church of Christ today.